Okay, uh, we got uh, three pickup trucks in the race to win the EV, first EV pickup. We got the Cybertruck, we got the Rivian, we got the Endurance. Who's going to win? Who's going to be the first EV? Okay, Tesla just surrendered the lead. Uh, some more definitive news came out on this today. Uh, they're sending out emails telling people, hey, you know, it's going to be a while till you get your uh, Cybertruck. Uh, why don't you lease a Model 3 in the meantime? Uh, they're saying, but different people are getting different emails that were, or not getting emails and getting emails. I don't know. I, I don't have one on order. But uh, now they're saying the release of the Cybertruck is going to be 2022, not 2021. Um in the begin you know, I thought the Austin factory for Tesla was going to be for um, the Cybertruck only, but now uh, Model Y. Actually, I think they're giving Model Y a priority. And uh, somebody, uh, there's a thing on the internet, you can find it. Uh, they got the status of the different plants and they say what they're going to build. For Austin, they have the Cybertruck listed as in development. Okay, so uh, the cyber, the uh, Gigafactory is set to open on May 2021, but they say open. I don't know if that means operational, spitting out cars, or what. Of course, they do know what they're doing. They have set up a few of these factories, and if they're going with the Y, they know how to do that already. You know, they're going for the redesign on the Cybertruck. Here's the thing. I saw a thing the other day. You can get an app that gives you the virtual size of the, of the Cybertruck and you can see if it fits in your garage. The Cybertruck is nine, over 19 feet long. And most uh, normal garages are 20 by 20. So, I mean, it's real close. The other thing is everything's load-bearing on the, um, on the Cybertruck. You know, the, the front hood, the, the, all the structures and everything, it's built like a bridge. You know, that's the arch of a bridge. So there's no crumple zones, or I guess they're good engineers. I'm sure they can figure out how to do that. But um, I think they might be going for it. If you, if you make a vehicle big enough, then um, you get a commercial or a farm. I don't know what it is. got to look this up. But it's like a commercial rating or a farm rating. And um, they, they put this in a, a loophole in for the farmers a long time ago so they didn't have to get special stuff for their uh, farm equipment and their farm trucks and so forth. But if you get a big enough one, it waves like the mileage requirements, uh, the sizes, the crumple zones, a lot of stuff. I think that might be what Tesla is going for. I don't know. But anyway, they got no, they got no rear view mirrors. And, you know, I'll tell you, I was thinking about it. The... Um, uh, the pillars, the roof pillars, are very structure, structural in that truck. They're load-bearing. So they ain't going to mount the mirrors there. They're going to have to mount them on the doors. But see, every time they put a hole in that body, it weakens it. Uh, again, because it's like a, a bridge. Anyway, there you go. I think Tesla, I think they basically gave up the ghost. I mean, they ain't coming out and saying it, but read between the lines. So here's a picture of the Gigafactory. This is like yesterday in Austin. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it looks like a big parking lot to me. But anyway, they, they build them really fast. They know what they're doing. They build a lot of them. I'm just saying. Anyway, I think we got a little clip uh, of Elon uh, talking about the uh, SpaceX uh, program coming up next. Nuclear reactors could provide power almost indefinitely. Elon Musk is working Green on SpaceX. This is his life. quote. Animals could be bred and slaughtered. Now let's get the Rivian. You know, Rivian's a private company. The ST1 they said was going to be the first pickup truck. They are really guarded. You can't get in information. Uh, it's hard to get information about them. It's not impossible. They're a private company. They don't have to do anything about it uh, about reporting so um, 
they've said now that the 60k the cheaper model is going to be out in 2021 and I don't know before it, these dates are questionable anyway there's a video out with the new CEO uh, but not the new CEO the original CEO the, CEO, the guy from MIT and he's talking about some supply constraints until 2023 on production and he mentions having to build the uh, Amazon van and a bunch of other things. I'm going to uh, include a clip, uh, following a, a clip here, of this interview, and you can listen to this for yourself. All right, and check out the images. Stealth mode, and since that time, you've made a lot of headlines. Bring us up to speed on where. Rivian's at in terms of production and when we might see the R1T pick up delivered to customers and the R1S SUV Listen as well. to this. As you said, we've made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. We're approaching our launch date. So we launched and started delivery of our R1T, the truck, in June of this coming year in 2021. And then the SUV shortly thereafter in August of 2021. Uh, and I'm actually sitting at the plant right now, and behind me is you can see vehicles. These on the guys line. are building the cars by uh, hand. Coming down, so we've got a white one, a silver one, snow and robots, and a white one coming down as we speak. But we're in the midst of really bringing the plant up and getting everything set in terms of quality systems, production systems, and it's not a small task um, because in parallel to launching the truck and HP, we're also building uh, a vehicle for logistics for Amazon. And that's also going to be built here a bit further back in the facility. But nonetheless, uh, that's launching in 2021 as well. On the consumer cars, talk to me about the kind of pre-orders, the level of pre-orders you've had, and what you're targeting in terms of production volume initially in 2021 and then from that point onwards. Yeah, the, the reaction to the product has been great. I mean, you and I uh, met right So he's not uh, saying what it is. And starting to show the product. We've still tried to be relatively quiet in terms of how we communicate and talk about what we're doing. Just in general, we like to let the product and interactions be uh, louder than words. So with that, um, what we've seen is just a great uh, sort of level of interest, a groundswell of, of support for what we're doing. And you know, the configurator launching this week, this past week for uh, pre-order customers okay. was really fun. It was fun he doesn't give any numbers. Okay, uh, in this uh, last section, I have some um, video from Lordstown Motors. They did a press junket, uh, a Zoom thing uh, for a German trade show. And um, anyway, um, it was pretty interesting. I hadn't heard a lot of this information. Anyway, uh, I'm going to play some clips from that. And then. Uh, but first, there's a clip of this some guy. I don't know. I'm going to put a link in the in the description. Got this video of uh, of the interior of the Endurance. It's the best video I've seen. I really like the interior. It reminds me of an old '62 Buick I used to have. Nice. All right, this guy here has the best. This is some of the best interior. Now, this is not a work. This is just a display model. It's not. It's not running, but it's to show this is the interior that's going to be on the truck, which I like. I think it's great. <clears throat> There's the uh, dash, and uh, see how plain it is? I think it's just great. What a great, it's a great, simple, uh, refreshingly different uh, design. There's your uh, three in the back, two in the front. There's the wheel hub motor, charging port. Of course, there's a frunk in this car. Here's a good shot of the interior coming in. And uh, I don't want to get uh, flagged for this, so uh, I'll just. Um, there's your. The uh, interior is going to be the same. Interior is going to be the same. And really, we may have some additional edits based on. See, uh, but uh, this is uh, this is a mock-up. But anyway. This is the best video I've seen of the interior, just to give you an idea what the truck looks like. There it is again. All right, this is a uh, presentation they did for a German uh, press junket for the, uh, and this is uh, Lordstown's guy, Steve Burns' guy, uh, Colm Flannery. Anyway, uh, just to let, I just wanted to point out a couple interesting things here. 
250 mile range, blah, 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 blah. It's got a five star crash rating. Okay. We don't know about the, we don't know about the uh, Cybertruck. It's got the four wheel motors, traction control, blah, blah, blah. I think this is, might be what Rivian's having trouble with because theirs is extremely complicated. This is extremely simple. Now, this is interesting. 4,000 pound curb weight. The lightest full size pickup, uh, fleet pickup on the market. That's, that's light. And now, this is the fleet model, has a 5.5 second 0 to 60. And this is with it detuned. As I said in another video, I think it can do um, uh, 3.5 um, with if it was running at full capacity. This is just a chart showing the uh, five-year. This is for fleets, but you can see that the, the uh, endurance five-year, 16,000 miles, the cost to operate it for five years is 34k versus the Ford F-150, probably the most popular fleet truck is 51 grand so what is that 16 grand more so it just gives you an idea uh you can see these again this is for 16 uh, this is total um cost of ownership for these different brands and the rams high they're all higher than the, the uh, endurance um i thought this was a very interesting this is a better look at the plant you can see how big it is it's uh, 6.2 million feet. I think they've got 10 million feet of possible usable space there. The annual vehicle capacity here is 420. It, uh, under the uh, EVs, uh, they can do 600,000, which is the first year order for the Cybertruck. That's the amount, by the way. Um, the replacement value of this plant is $3 billion okay um and uh, interestingly enough they have a solar array which is right here uh, uh 2.2 uh, megawatts i'm going to play this with the sound off this is a, I think this is a pretty good video showing giving you an idea of uh it's a flyover by a drone of the plant and so forth and um it's uh I haven't seen it before, but it gives you an idea of how, how big it is. I mean, you know, these are just different angles. I don't even think they can get the whole thing on one angle. There's the solar array uh, that's in front of the place, and uh, there's everybody seen that. That's the, uh, and then this is, look at, look at this plant compared to the Rivian, uh, clip of the Rivian video. Look at this. There's Steve Burns, but, um, and these are just little snippets. Again, uh, the size of this plant, I forget how many robots they said were in it. And this is all a bit dusty, but this was an operating plant just, you know, less than a year ago. So, you know, they ain't running around with feather dusters when they're building cars. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, just to give you an idea of the immensity of this, uh, of this plant. And uh, old Column over there said, uh, you need a... Uh, a scooter or a golf cart uh, to get around the plant because th that's how big the plant is. Uh, this is a uh, the uh, some of the management team. There's more people involved, and there's there's people from VW and Toyota and all kind of stuff. But I just wanted to point out this guy right here is uh, Rich uh, Schmidt. Uh, leading force beside, behind the design, conversion, and improvement of uh, 12 automotive plants, including Tesla's plant in Fremont, California. And you can see, this is he's one of the OGs from Fremont. And uh, Tesla, Toyota, Nissan, Hyundai, and Volkswagen, he's worked for them all. A couple of interesting things uh, Colum uh, mentioned. Uh, one was... Uh, that uh, they're planning to ship vehicles to Europe at the end of next year or the beginning of 2022. So that's in their plans. Um, he did mention that they're selling to fleets, but they're also selling to individuals. And um, 
a very interesting thing uh, he said. He kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit here, but uh, that this line is capable and it's basically all set up and they're going to be running, uh, and I mentioned this in another video, uh, the next product is going to be an SUV and then a van.